I appreciate it when after watching only the first trailer that lots of surprises were still in store. Later trailers of things should always be avoided for this reason, case and point. This is some of the most fun I've had at the movies this year. I think you pronounce it David Leitch, but David Leitch continues to prove he is one of the best action directors working today. If you're not familiar with his impressive history as a stuntman, second unit director, and now big budget director, you should definitely check his stuff out. And let me go ahead and get this out of the way that there is a content warning for this movie. There's mild to brief sexual content, but lots of language, uh, blood, graphic violence. It's presented incredibly stylistically, but the visceral nature of it won't be for everyone. Keep the MPAA ratings in mind as it is rated R. That style just oozes personality and cool. It's going to be remembered for having such a fun factor despite the fairly dark premise. I mean, it is about assassins. It's got sharp, near rhythmic editing and some of the more inventive camera work this year. There's a particularly unique sequence that involves a camera on a water bottle that's a joy to watch unfold. When so much effort is put into making a film stand out in every frame, any bit of text on screen, and especially the editing, it's hard not to smile. And the movie is surprisingly really funny. Largely. I smiled throughout and busted out laughing at several points. There's a running gag throughout that will really make uh, folks with kids laugh quite a bit. But does all the humor land? No, it doesn't. Some jokes are funny, but don't really inspire laughter. You just kind of, hmm. And some just don't land and border the silly territory. Then there's one or two that are actually randomly offensive, actually, and occasionally, because of all this, it's just too witty. So much that it gets a little lost in the banter, with thick accent delivery masking some of the enunciation to understand the rapid fire nature of everything going on. It is a funny movie, and it largely works for me, but not everything lands, which goes to show that maybe they could have dialed it back just a little bit more. And when I say it's too witty, I don't mean that it's like Thor Love and Thunder where everything's funny, it's too funny, it tries too hard. It's just the sense that sometimes less is more and that could have been the approach here, but by and large, I'm, I'm okay with it. This specific issue rears itself again in a couple of the plot revelations and exposition dumps throughout. So many twists, so fast, with constant flashbacks that it can be tough to grasp at all. It's not incoherent in the sense, but it because it's mostly able to be followed, but there's one or two pieces of context I found myself questioning, wait, why did this happen? Near the end. And that's where the style can take over the story. It's forgivable for keeping things engaging, even when it doesn't connect like it ought to. What I am happy to say though, is that it's not without substance. There's some outstanding performances here. Brad Pitt actually plays his type while also playing a little bit against his hype here with his personality in the film. It's a refreshing change for him, and you can tell he had a blast doing it. His banter and one-liners are delivered with so much enthusiasm, and the casting is just excellent all around. With Joey King holding her own against some heavyweights, but Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon and Tangerine are the absolute standouts. I'd watch a prequel movie with just them. They have a couple really emotional, brotherly scenes that affected me way more than I anticipated. There is a long stretch of the film where they feel like the lead characters. And sometimes this movie battles with that for, for screen time across so many characters. It never feels too inorganic or too unfocused, but it is an observation that you will have. I mean, there are several hilariously staged cameos by unexpected actors that just kept it all going light and fun, but visceral at the same time. I think my biggest disappointment is twofold. Hiroyuki Sonata gets some incredible moments near the end, but it's not as flashy as I prefer, and it begins to lean on slow-mo a little bit too much, which is a little bit odd. I felt the action overall in the film was really well staged and shot and choreographed. But here it took a step back for a big moment. It's still crowd-pleasing, but I was expecting a bit more there, and maybe it's partially because he comes into the plot a little bit too late, into the main part of the story he's relegated to the side for most of it. His role is weighty, and he provides a nice rounding to Brad Pitt's arc that I thought would be solely for laughs, and it wasn't. And I like being surprised like that. The second part of that letdown is Andrew Koji. He absolutely killed it as Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, and I've heard he's great in the TV show Warrior. He provided a huge emotional crux to the film, and he lends a gravitas to his performance. But as a stuntman and martial artist, outside of the emotional beats in the story, 
he feels largely wasted. The payoff with him doesn't feel as weighty as it should when Sonata shows up, and Koji gets literally like 10 seconds of action screen time. I was expecting more, and that is on me, but I can't help but feel like that massive talent is being underutilized. And I just hope he does more, and I hope he gets more credit there. He would be my pick for Kwai Liang Sub-Zero, the younger Sub-Zero, the one Sub-Zero most people know in the second Mortal Kombat movie coming up. Andrew Koji for him. Sub-Zero, be great. At the end of the day, I'll never forget watching this in the theaters with my buddies. It's ambitious, loads of fun, and one of the more memorable films of the year. While I had some small nitpicks and modest issues with it at times, nothing major bothered me so much despite one joke that I have to knock it way down in points. It's a great time at the movies, it feels fresh in a sometimes stale landscape, and is entertaining throughout and made me laugh. It's right up my alley. That 8.5 to 9 out of 10 range feels appropriate here, and you can decide where I'm at with this score which is the beauty of a star system. I give Bullet Train 4.5 stars out of five. Thanks so much for watching this. Please like the video, subscribe for a ton more content coming soon, and remember, always look for the good.